Welcome to Live Free. I'm Angela K. Austin. Together, we'll discuss books, we'll explore the world, and we'll do it with some of my closest friends. And hopefully, we'll make new ones along the way. All right. Hey, everybody. This is Angela K. Austin, and today I am here with Rebecca Lee. Say hi to everybody, Rebecca. Hey, y'all. How you doing? <laughs> All right. So if you guys know Twyla Turner, you guys know that Twyla Turner shouts out everybody. And when she shouted out Rebecca Lee, I was like, who is she? Where is she? And how do I interview her? Because everybody fell in love with the book that Rebecca did for Twyla Turner. So we're going to talk a little bit about that book because I definitely want to talk about your work relationship and how you and Twyla work together a little bit. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about who Rebecca Lee is and how did you get into this whole crazy thing of being a voice artist? Tell us a little bit about all of that. So first, tell everybody who you are, Rebecca. I am a voice actor full time. That is my entire job right now. And, and I'm loving life. I have never felt so free. Um, and like I've been moving so much in my actual purpose. And it took a while to figure out what that purpose was and, and, and what to do and, and how to have the confidence to move forward. Um, for 15 years, I was a flight attendant. So that was my last on the clock, uh, somebody else's gig job that I had. And actually it just ended um, March of last year, May, May of last year um, due to COVID. Um, at that time, I was already doing voiceover work. I had been doing it off and on as a side hustle that I planned to eventually do full time, but I didn't honestly have the, 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 the catalyst or the motivation to jump all the way off because at that at 15 years in, I was able to, you know, work the flights and trips that I wanted to. I was able to hold on to that safety raft, if you know what I'm saying. Um, but I did start voiceover with that job because I was on the little puddle jumpers, a little 50 seaters um, aircraft that I was the only flight attendant and we didn't have the fancy TV screens or anything that made literally was on the PA making all of the announcements. Hello, welcome aboard Delta Airlines flight number 3257 with service to Chicago every single day, several times a day. And that is how I got my start because when people would finally look up from their devices and realize that I was the one talking, every single flight, someone said, you need to be doing something with that voice. Your talents are wasted. Um, wow, I can't believe that's you. You sounded like a recording. I thought it was a recording. You should get into voiceover. And of course, it was always really flattering to hear. Um, of course, I was always pleased by it. But of course, I was also always like, well, you know somebody? Like, hook this up because it's not just a, a field that you just jump into necessarily without having somebody there already willing to kind of help you on that path. So I did hear it enough times and eventually I had a few people from the aircraft hire me right there to do various things for them. E-learning was one that that was my bread and butter for a while. Promos for lift products for small businesses, even IVR, which is um, you've reached Johnson and Johnson come by, leave your, you know, leave your uh, message at the tone kind of thing. But enough people hired me like the very first over uh, first voiceover job that I had, we were standing up ready to the plane and a gentleman that had been in first class with me says, right quick, I'll give you a hundred dollars right now. I've got my voicemail. I'm going to, I'm going to press the button. Can you record my voicemail? What's your name, sir? Richard. Hi, you reached Richard's voicemail. And he literally gave me the, the money and I thought someone's willing to pay me for this. So that is how I started. And then due to COVID, I decided I wasn't comfortable flying anymore and being around, you know, the, all the people. So without really having a secure, like, you know, it, usually you would quit once you're making a good income and that is not how it worked for me, but I dove in head first and have never been more successful, have never been more happy. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm really living that dream right now and it's allowed me to be remote and move abroad. And, and so, yeah, yeah, life is really good. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it definitely does. Um, that's so funny that a customer uh, on the plane was like, I'll pay you $100 to do my my voicemail. That is absolutely <laughs> insane. And I love everything about that. You know, to me, I'm one of those people that um, I'm one of those people who believes that if something is meant for you is meant for you, you know, 
So, oh my God, it completely seems like what you were doing was, was meant for you if it just literally fell and hit you on the head like that. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> and move abroad. You said that to me before. We definitely have to talk about that as we both have moved abroad. So it's a bonus question that we're going to have to get to, you know, at some point in this conversation. Um, but let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about like, since you said, you know, like you, you said um, just then, when you decided to jump into this, you, you know, just kind of jumped into it. That's tremendous. <laughs> That's tremendous. So how did you know, like, where to start? How did you know how to do it when you just dived in, like, you know, head first? How did you know, what, how did you learn the, what to do? That's a good question, luckily, because it was very scary. Um, luckily, at that time, you know what, community. I give it all to networking, every last bit of this. In the seven or so years that I was doing this before, on my own, in the last year, I think it was 2018, I went to VO Atlanta, and that's the biggest voiceover conference um, of them all. There's, there's, there's a number of them, and there's one in LA that I think is pretty large too, but I wanna say VO Atlanta is the biggest one. And just from the connections I made there, not even people giving me jobs, but just other VOs that were working. I think that's the number one thing for this, for this career is meet other VOs that are working. And it's the only job in the entertainment industry, I think, that's genuinely supportive. So in other cases where it's like people might not be as helpful because they in the entertainment industry because it might take away, they feel like it might take away from them. Voice artists are so here, here's my agent, here's my this, here's my information, this is my coach, like it, it's amazing. And, and then in that time, since I did that, I happened to just have at that time a few connections that I've made. And once again, they weren't the ones hiring, but just people that were doing it too, that I could look at, emulate, join some Facebook groups with them. That was huge because they're posting their questions, concerns, things that they were going through. So right around that time, I had, I had just started getting active within the voiceover community, which welcomed me with open arms, not being very experienced. I mean, like I said, I had years in, but here and there, and you know, not the caliber of stuff that I'm doing now, which is promo and commercials is more where I'm at now. Um, but back then it was just e-learning and stuff. And <laughs> I just knew I wasn't flying anymore. Like that was, that was the first certainty. And the second certainty was you are a professional. Stop having this imposter syndrome. You've done it before. People are paying you. You, you have your placard out, kind of like I've got the website. You've got the demo. You are a voice actor. And to just get over the fear that I had, that feeling like, oh, I'm not really one yet. Like I'm kind of doing it, but I'm not serious and I'm not. Yes, yeah, I am. I am. And I, when, I, when I accepted that and then leaned into that community and just did as much research as I could online in, that group, in the groups that I was in, I started coaching much more heavily. Boy, did I start coaching much more heavily. Um, but I was already luckily in place enough. So it wasn't as if I just stopped flying. And, and then from there, I didn't have a microphone. I didn't have a, a studio space. I had those things already. So it, it wasn't completely, you know, a, a brand new thing, but to, but to rely on income that I wasn't making at that time and give up the income, that was brand new. So I knew I could get the work and I knew that I just had to really market myself hard, put myself out there. And most of all, just believe, just believe. So I had the things in, in place around me um, I just had to utilize them and believe in myself enough to actually go for it. You know, that's so funny that you say that, Rebecca, because, you know, even um, in the world of indie authors, we have that same battle, you know, because, you know, if you're an author, then, you know, are you with one of the big five publishers? Because, I mean, like, I remember when I first started in this whole game, People will be like, oh, your book's an ebook, it's digital, you know, it's whatever. You know, uh, that's not a real book, you know, it's not a real book if I can't go into a bookstore and get it. And, you know, so like now you think about it, think about the work that you do with audiobooks, think about the work that, you know, we do with ebooks, audiobooks, and whatever. But just 10, 15 years ago, when I first started, none of it was considered legitimate. So when you say that, you know, you had to believe in yourself and, you know, you had to say to yourself, 
it's not that I'm kind of, sort of a voiceover yeah. artist. I am <laughs> a voiceover artist. It's the same thing, you know, and it's just, um, it's just one of those things that continues to amaze me. It's like, no matter who someone is, if there's something that they're doing that's different for them or different for, you know, different from the people who are around them, it's seen yeah. as just that different and people don't necessarily understand it and you don't always have all the support that you would want you know so i'm so glad that you just took that leap of faith and got out there because twyla turner has been shouting your name from like rooftops you know i'm not just like well who is she contact her ask her if she'll in it let me do an interview with her so i'm so so glad that she did um and that takes me to another question. So now we know how you got started. Maybe, you know, towards the end, we can talk a little bit and you can offer some tips on how someone else can get into this. But yeah. first, let's give people a good description of what an audio book is, you know, because we all have so many different ideas. Like, again, when it first started, it would be like one voiceover artist and now you get where there's like multiple there could be like man and woman it could be a woman doing the man's work. but tell us what is an audio book basically just a, a an, an audible like a digital recording of uh, like you pointed out one um actor or many actors and in, in some cases performing that that work that piece um it really is, I mean, it really is that simple, but it can be a lot more advanced because some of them have sound effects. Some have, like I said, multiple um, uh, um, voice actors. Some, I just uh, heard recently, I didn't just hear about it, but I had a, a, a few friends that worked on, it's called 400 Souls. And it's so many voice actors on one book, like different snippet of uh, snippets of them telling their stories about what it is to be black. Um, and and there's also a lot of celebrities on that so that's the first time even that i've heard of something like that to that scope it, it, it's amazing i can't wait to, i haven't heard it yet but i can't wait to one that i just finished working on that i'm really proud of um is by um moon it's moon u.s civil rights trail um that's by deborah douglas and this is the first time that i've seen or heard of the concept of an audiobook that comes with uh, it's like a sort of modern day green book uh if, if you remember the green book for, for black travelers um and it kind of walks you through the civil rights trail the path so you can walk in the footsteps of all these greats um and and kind of be where they were and and maybe even feel some of what they were feeling during the moment uh, during the movement but this book has music it has different sound effects. It has a PDF that comes with it, all kinds of digital files and references and things. So that was new to me too. So that the, the concept of an audiobook has really expanded and I'm so happy to be part of it and looking forward to more. But the very basic definition is just an author's work on in a, in a form that it, it's somehow digital that you can listen to in MP3 form or tape or CD or anything like that. That is, I mean, music, PDF downloads, you know, when you said Green Book, you had me at that because I um, did a short story that was kind of like an homage to the Green Book. And for people who don't know about it, you know, it's definitely, a, um, you know, a part of Black Americans' history. It was a guy that was um, out there to help people of color travel safely from one part of the states to another part of the states. So, um, and I can't remember how long it was out there, but you know, there's all kinds of stuff out there. You, you can research and find out more about it. But um, when you said that, that perked open my ears right there because I'm like something that is similar to that, that is in and of itself. And I love history and I love historicals and um, I've written a couple of historicals. So I love anything that like jumps into um, black American history and tell us a little bit of something about what's going on with that. So oh, yeah. now when yeah. is, is that available right now? Is that something that people can, I believe it drops the 23rd. Is that today? Today is the 25th. Oh, it's been, um, this, this, oh my God. Sorry, y'all. I am <laughs> traveling. I am traveling. I am not my right mind, but is it okay? So then it's already dropped on the 23rd. I got to go check it out. Yay. <laughs> so it's, 
<laughs> it should be available now. And I'm so proud and happy and endorse it so much. We talk about places to eat, sites to see, like it, it's just, and it dig, digs deeply into the civil rights movement, very, very deeply. I learned quite a bit in working, which is another really fun thing about doing audiobooks because they can be about, over, I mean, anything that you can find in the library, you can find an audiobook on it. And I've learned a lot just doing them. So yeah. amazing, but I totally recommend it. Yeah. I love that. Okay. So we're going to make sure we get the name of that again so that I can, you know, share it with everybody who's watching and listening. So everybody can go and check that one out. Um, now this takes me back um, to my, one of my original questions about you and Twyla working together, right? So tell us a little bit about just in general, because there are so many people who are indie authors and every day they're like, okay, I have an ebook, I have a print book. Do I need an audio book? And if I need an audio book, where do I start? How do I find the voiceover artists? How do I know that they're good? How do you know, how, how do I know how much to pay? Blah, 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 blah. So let's talk a little bit about that, you know. Um, even in general, just to share a little bit of how you and Twyla work together, but tell us how do voiceover artists, or even more specifically you, how do you work with authors who are trying to create an audiobook? I, my experience may, well, I was going to say it may not be one to follow, but of course it is because we have all these different paths, right, that we take to get places. But I wish I could say that, that like a more instructional path, a friend, word of mouth, told me about Twyla Twyla's book. She really, not only told, but hey, Amber, if you're out there, she's amazing. She took a snippet of my, she said, here, read this, took a snippet of my voice reading a piece of Twyla's book, sent it to Twyla with a a little video, not a video, well, it was a little video attached to it and said, you need her to do this. So I can't take any credit for it. I can't because she said, this is, this is one of my favorite authors here, do this. She sent it to her. Twilight was like, yes, absolutely. I want it. Let's do it. So I'm not sure if, I'm, I'm, I think, I imagine she was, was considering an audiobook already, I think, because she was pretty much ready to pull the trigger, but maybe she wasn't looking for it actively at that time. And it just so happened that my friend Amber was like, this is what you need in your life. Here you go. And she also kind of um, introduced me to a few other um, indie author authors who I am already and willing to work with whenever. Um, so that experience, and that was my first audiobook. So that's how I came into it. I, I did not, I didn't go looking. So what I'm going to say about how to find them now, I'm, I'm, it's still going to be accurate, but it's not from my personal experience because from there, I immediately got an agent who now sends me the books that I do. So I'm, I work with recorded books and Hachette, Hachette, they say that correctly, Hachette um, now, and that's who I've been doing my stuff with lately. Uh, but um, word of mouth is huge. And I think for indie authors in particular, you can go through ACX and Audible. That is definitely probably the most common way. Um, but if you kind of want that more personalized feel to handpick your, your, your voice actor yourself and, and talk to them on a level without that third party being involved, I would say go to Twitter. You can find us on Facebook, but I don't know how easy it would be to search. I mean, you can literally just search voiced artist, voice actor, voiceover, and kind of see whose profiles come up. But I found that Twitter for indie stuff seems to work really good. Um, I've, I'm doing indie video games on there as well. It's just really easy to connect directly with people that are, hey, you know, this is what I do, um, or this is what I'm looking for. They're constantly posting things. So, so voice actors are looking for work. Authors and other people, uh, game developers and such, are looking for voice actors. And there's just a constant fresh flow of new ideas that is not mainstream, um, new ideas, new art. Um, lots and lots of creatives looking for each other. It's a, it's a wonderful thing. And I'm not really good at Twitter or active on it, but I do know that because I've seen it with my own eyes, like all the time, they're always casting, always looking. And, um, and it's really easy to just look for the VO on the end of someone's name. Most of us, like I'm Rebecca Lee VO. Um, most of us have a VO on our name, but if you search anything having to do with voice acting, we, you can't, like it's very, very easy to find. So that's what I would do if I were writing is probably look there first. Most of us um, will have a demo of some sort. So then you can ask for a narration demo um, at that point or even a commercial demo. 
And, and, and if they don't have one, you can just ask, hey, can you, just like Amber did with me for, for Twyla, can you just read this paragraph or this chapter and send it back to me? Do you like that? We are more than willing to do that. You don't usually have to pay for it. I don't know anybody that there is a thing it's such as paid additions, auditions, but that's not, reg that's not regular. If they're interested and they like the subject and they like your work, they'll just audition for you. And then you can just have that plethora of, of artists to, um, to choose from at that point. Pricing, it can be looked up online for indie. It is different. What I get paid per hour now working for the larger recording, um, not that I don't do indie anymore. I still do, especially Black women. I'm here for us. Um, but um, but they're, the rates are, are quite different. The rates are quite different. So at that point, you probably would like to look online to see what's available I would say GVAA is, is, the, is the standard, that's the gold standard for voiceover rates, but it is higher. Mm, it, it, it talks about union and non-union, I believe, but it's gonna be higher range, but that's just a ballpark of knowing where to start, I think, or, or what would be the highest, most likely. And from there, um, that's an interesting, you would just ask, or, or, or what I appreciate as a voice our budget and I'll tell you if it works or not or what would be more flexible um, and we can work something out we're really usually very very nice like as long as you're not uh, shooting for you know Angela Bass somebody who's got this huge huge presence and following and, and obviously at that point there's a tag that comes with that for the most part if it's something that we can get into and be excited about um, if you're easy to work with as an author uh, we are, we are, we're mostly going to be very, very willing to help. And, and then the more fresh the voice actor, I think, the better of a rate you can get. So it's, it's, it's very, there's nothing set in stone there, but it's very easy to negotiate, I would say. Just have a budget in mind, kind of doing some research. Maybe ask other indie authors who are already published what they might do. Um, Twyla made it just very, very easy on me, and I did offer and am still offering um, introductory rates, like rates for, for, for new authors that I'd like to work with, just because I want to help. So it helps to get my name and my voice out there, and so that's a thing, too. You can kind of say, hey, I want to put your name out there and recommend you to other authors. What can we do for this? If you, someone brings me continuous work, then I'm willing to do, I'm willing to adjust my rates for that if I know there'll be another book or there'll be a, a website or something else in the future. So it's very flexible. Um, talk to other authors who already have had it done and and just ask, just ask. I'm happy if anybody wants to message me and talk about it more in detail. Um, I'm happy to do that. Uh, but 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 I think that it, that most things can be worked out just depending on who you find. And yeah, and, and nothing is set in stone. So there's always somebody that you'll like and appreciate and who is talented, who will do things within the budget, as long as you're reasonable, of course, um, that you have in mind, just ask. You know, and that's one of the things that I, mean, I hope all of us as indie authors, we've kind of sort of figured out <laughs> that you have to ask questions because, you know, book by book, we are, um, well, I, I, I think the majority of us, book by book, are re creating budgets and trying to figure out how to make that project as successful as we can. And I think so right. many of us, we know that one of the ways to make things successful is to find people who we can say are part of our team that we're going to work with project after project after project so that we keep lifting each other and you know and making that happen and that brings me to another question how do you know if you're working with a voiceover artist who is not right for you for your project how do you stop it <laughs> how do you you know how do you break that partnership and and you know move on in separate directions so if they're not delivering uh oh don't shoot myself in the foot i'm gonna say again twyla was my first audiobook it took me longer to do that book than it should have but I stayed on top of it. I communicated very effectively all the time, was always saying, hey, I'm here, this is where I'm at. So I would say that the, the opposite of that and the converse of that is if an author is not, excuse me, a voice actor is not communicative, 
if they're not ma making deadlines and they are not offering any heads up or any explanation or just not being respectful of your time, your craft, your art, if they're not making changes that you need, like if you say, this is mispronounced, could you go back and, and try this one again if they're resistant or, or if, if, because I would ask for a paragraph or two here or there every now and then just to see how it's going. Um, and if you're just hearing a quality that isn't, that's important. There's, that's important. There are a lot of, especially with COVID, everybody that's been told they have a nice voice now bought a microphone and is in somebody's closet trying to record. That audio quality, I'm not knocking them, but your audio quality needs to be decent, especially if you're going on, um, on, you know, Audible or, or something like that. Like it, um, you need to be able to meet those certain standards. So that's a good one. Have them record a little bit periodically and just send it to you because maybe that audio quality is not going to be reflective of what you need in order to have those, those audio books um, published where you want them to be. So that's a big one. But, but, but basically it's a vibe that you would know really with anyone, I think that you're dealing with, whether it's in business or, or personal life, um, you just feel off. You don't feel comfortable. I'd like to be able to, while maintaining decorum and being professional, I'd like to be able to laugh a little bit, joke a little bit, talk a little bit, like get a real life feel for each other. So if anything feels weird in those organic conversations where you're just getting to know each other and maybe giving them what you what you're expecting or what you want to hear or what you would like or envision like can you can that person regurgitate your ideas do you flow well together do you feel that vibe and then if you don't if any of the above the quality is bad or they're not responsive or they're missing deadlines and things hmm to break to break that <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, that's rough. Um, if you have a contract, only in really larger productions, I think, do you start having a contract. But your word is your contract, right? As a as a as a voiceover artist, as a, as an author, your word is your contract. So I'm not in, I'm not endorsing anybody to go out and be a bad person. I just mean that it can be a verbal thing. Like it can be a this isn't working. It would be very to not have your name sullied or not have a bunch of drama, it would be really good to pay for the work that the voice actor has done. If you just want to clear that space and no hard feelings, that's what I would recommend first. I know that if you have a certain budget set aside and that's what you had to get your book done and now you got to pay somebody half of that and then go find someone else to do, I know. I know that's a lot to ask. But in order to keep your professional name and reputation and realizing how much work this is, that moon... Civil Rights Trail, I believe it's 19 hours finished. <laughs> that took me <laughs> maybe six hours a day, seven hours a day <laughs> for weeks to finish that. It's a lot of work on the voice actor. It is not just as simple as opening it up and reading. Um, so with that in mind, please, if you want to get rid of us, <laughs> one of us, that is more than your, than your prerogative because the book should be reflective of you, the sound, the voice, um, everything that you want them to envision, your stories, your characters, like I get it, it's your baby. Try, unless the, the voice actor is just really disrespectful, try to honor that time, work out something, see what's reasonable and fair to both of you um, and, and give them something for their time because it is a lot, a lot of work. As a writer, you know, a finished piece could be, you know, whatever, however many words, you know, 25, 45, 65, 85. And a reader could read that, depending on, you know, mm -hmm. depending on the reader. <laughs> a reader could read that. I mean, I think I had somebody tell me one time they read one of my books in like two hours. Now, mind you, probably took me. Yep you know, four or five months to write it, <laughs> but it took them two hours to read it. So I completely understand what you're saying when you, you know, say if you realize that relationship is not working to be proactive, because it does, you know, it can save time for that voiceover artist, you know, because if it's not working, they could go take another project. Um, you can go and find mm -hmm. someone else to do the project that you want done because you can still hit the deadlines that you set for your own project. So I like that, you know, having some 
some good communication. And like I said, no matter what it is, <laughs> just having good communication can stop you from having a product or a project finished and then being completely disappointed. And everybody's time is wasted. And then as you, you said, you know, you're potentially paying for in some way for that project just to be, you know, to compensate for the time spent as well as then going and paying for someone else to do the project the way you want it to. Because it's not like you can just be like, oh, okay, well, no. Rebecca Lee did this part, this part I like. Now you come and do this part. We just have two, <laughs> you, you know, that's not going to work. So you got to like, like, what happened? <laughs> like she sounded like this, you know, the first 30 minutes, then all of a sudden, right? You know, it's like, that is not what we want. Everything so, um, so yeah, I think that that's a, I think that's a good way to make sure that you maybe do some sampling, but have some good communication yep. so that the project awesome. does, you know, end up becoming the piece that you want it to become, you know, I like and that. Recasting is common. With recasting is common. So it's not unheard of. No one likes to hear it. Of course, no one wants to be like, you know, this isn't working, but it is a common part of our job. So we can take it. And if we can't take it, that person does not need to be a voice actor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can understand that. And I like that. Um, now, as we talked a little bit about how you got into it, you know, got into voice over work and became a voice artist. And we talked a little bit how authors can find them. But what about for the next voiceover artist? What, I mean, would you, would you have some like best practices, some, some tips for them? Like how do they become voiceover artists? How do they work with authors? You know, like just some, some tips of the trade. Sure. The, the general thing, if you are looking into becoming a voice actor, a voiceover artist, there's many names for it, um, VO, VA. Um, first, it's always going to be said that, that coaching, that training is the most important thing and the very first step. And it's true, no matter how, <laughs> I learned the hard way, no matter how nice your voice naturally is and how fast and well you can sight read. I, <laughs> when I first started, not, not this last time, but maybe seven years ago, I was like, oh, piece of cake, I can totally do that. I speak well and I can sight read, you know, fast and you know, it, that, but that's not it. You have to be able to act. You have to be able to take that copy, that, that, that script or the book or, or the words in front of you and interpret them on site and, and deliver them in a way that's believable and authentic and real and, and personable. And so that usually takes some work for most of us, right? Um, it's, a, it's a whole different ball game. It's an entire craft. Um, and as artists already, as authors, I know that everyone gets that. Like, it's not just as simple as putting pen to paper. There's a craft, right? So um, for that, I would specifically look up some voice voiceover coaching. Um, and within that community that I mentioned, because like I said, Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter, IG, it's very easy to find that, link up with other people. And again, I'm, I'm more than willing to talk to anybody for specific uh, recommendations, but you'll want to look up voiceover coaching and improv acting. Improv acting is super helpful because it kind of teaches you to be quick on your feet and flexible, not just in acting, but in life, uh, how to take things in stride and kind of roll with the punches and, and move more flexibly, with more flexibility, I should say. Um, improv gives you the flexibility to kind of roll with the punches and interpret things in different ways. Um, because often when approached with a piece of copy, a voice actor, a, a fairly new one might look at it and take the obvious route, which is fine because <laughs> at the end of the day, they're usually going to go with the obvious read in the commercial. But the people that tend to get hired are the ones that did it did the audition usually in a, in a different way. And it probably wasn't what they were looking for. It was something about it that was unexpected that made them sit up from the hundreds of voices they've been listening to and actually pay attention. So improv is good for that, but also just being able to kind of take that, that piece of, of, of writing and, and personalize it and put yourself really into that role and into that character. So those are the first two things. And after that, you would want to have a demo made. That is your calling card. That is how you shop yourself around and say, this is what I do now. I'm available for all your voiceover needs. And, um, Usually a coach, a good coach, will let you know when you're ready for that um, and then be able to recommend to you someone reputable because there are lots of people out here claiming to be coach, claiming to be demo producers that 
probably there that are making a lot of money for subpar uh, subpar work because people don't know any better. A really good reputable coach will put you with a really good reputable demo producer, and then you just need your website and your really <laughs> then your equipment, your equipment at home. You need a good a quality mic. The most important part of being a voice um, over is really not the all bells and whistles of the mic or the best interest, though. It's a it's having a a space to record in that is properly sound treated. Um, properly dampened it can be a closet mine has been a closet for some time i finally ended up building a studio space within a very large closet and that's my professional broadcast quality studio space um but anything that you can kind of muffle with a lot of clothes a lot of um, moving blankets advance and get a little bit of foam and things like that to put that up that's the most important thing you want your voice to be clear free of noise so no um refrigerator in the background or air condition on, fans humming, th planes flying overhead, things like that. That is the most important thing. And then your microphone, you want a good quality, but there are many in that price, you know, many good quality mics, 200, 300, $500. So that doesn't have to be the break the bank thing. Wait and wait on getting all the fancy stuff until you're bringing in the checks that justify that because you can make magic happen um, with, um, with a good quality, but lower brand um, microphone and, and interface. Um, Scarlet Focus Right is, a, is for an in, for an interface. I don't want to use too many details because it's it's hard if you if you've never heard these things before. But Scarlet Focus Right is a good brand of a very solid interface um, that is that is very cost effective. So I will go ahead and drop that one out there because I I totally believe in that. And many 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 voice actors use this product and it's it's affordable and it's it's great. So um, but things like that. Um, get your your training first. Your equipment. Mm, lots and lots of coaching and that's an ongoing thing and it will continue to be an ongoing thing for your entire career your demo is your calling card you want to put that on a website where people can find you and then get out and start networking marketing is a huge thing it's a huge thing um i was always scared to put myself out there and market and push pedal my wares as i call it because it's like you don't want to bother somebody right and you being a marketing professional i should be talking to you and after this we should talk because i still struggle with feeling like i'm bothering somebody you know but i'm not if they're looking for you and they want you all you're doing is letting people know what you have that can make their life better easier that can put their product out there so marketing really is the best way and that's going to be your bread and butter because i have agents now and they bring me wonderful opportunities you're not going to book those that often so it's not necessary to be so that's why i said in the very beginning oh i'm not really a voice actor i'm not really yes i am I, it didn't take it took me getting the agents and getting the bigger jobs to realize yeah no i was and i was paying my bills with those jobs um you can make a lot more money going to a an organization that might need um, e-learning that's huge right now y'all with COVID with all the home um, based learning and classes and, and work everything is digital everything is online so there is a huge need for people to read these um, classes to you these materials these workshops and things like that so just going to a company that maybe was looking maybe they weren't looking yet maybe they didn't know they needed it yet and saying this is what I offer can I voice this for you then you get this job and it didn't require being known or famous or in this, you know, it didn't require any more than you opening your mouth, really. And you can make a really great income doing that. So those are the steps that I would take. The coaching, training, get in some community. It's very, very easy. Get in a network, um, get your demo made, get your studio set up. And there's lots of, of places that we can recommend pe people, other coaches that you can talk to that will tell you exactly how to set up your specific space in your specific home. Um, get all of that done and then just get out there and start thinking about who you would love to work for, who you would love to look for small businesses, go to small business conventions when they start doing those again. That's a, that's a really big way to make um, money from people that didn't maybe even know they were looking for voice actors. There's pay to plays online, y'all. Uh, I recommend them with a grain of salt. They're, I think that they're good practice. I think that you can make a lot of, no, not a lot. That's not a lot. Let me take that back. Not a lot. Not a lot of money. You can make money on these sites. That is often where most of us start first. Um, Voice123.com, I'll recommend. Badalgo.com, I'll recommend. There's a new site coming out called castvoices.com, I will recommend. Um, there are a number of these sites where you just get on there, you put your demos on there, and the auditions will start to come to you and you audition for them. And if they like you, they like you. Understand that there's hundreds of thousands of people doing it. The odds 
are low, but you get a chance to see fresh copy, lots and lots of it every day and practice your craft and there's a chance to get picked up. So although I, I really don't recommend it because the rates are really low, they don't tend to pay industry standard. It's very important for us as artists to stick together and realize that we need to charge our worth. And just because you're new at something doesn't mean you should accept subpar rates. It drives the whole industry down. All of that to say, my biggest paying client to date that is paying my bills came off of one of those sites. You know, I like so much about what you said right there. One, I want to point out um, that you said marketing. And I want to, because people know, I always hop on everything marketing. <laughs> but um, when people say, because like marketing is, you know, is a, a science in of itself that's composed of a lot of different parts. And so when people use the word marketing versus advertising, I love it because it tells me that you understand that there's so many different components that go into it and that you have to have a kind of fully developed plan, you know? And so like even you being here with me is a part of promotion, you know? So that's part of your marketing Absolutely. plan, you know? It's something that's not costing you anything, yeah. you know, but it'll go out to the audience who's following me, which a whole bunch of indie artists. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Definitely. You know, and so I love that you said that. Um, and I also love that you talked about, uh, was it Voice123 and all these other sites? Because I tell people a lot of the time, you know, like um, sometimes we don't want to kind of start at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not saying stay there, you know, I'm not saying stay there at all, but like you said, one of your biggest clients, you got from one I of those, did. those It sites. can happen. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, everybody has to start somewhere. And then once you have two, three, four, five of those in your pocket, you know, now you've figured out your system. That's right. You, you know what works for you. You've got some credentials. You can create a portfolio. You can take that and you can go to the next step and you keep edging your way That's up. Right. But, you know, like you said, don't go out there and spend crap tons of dollars on a whole bunch of equipment, you know, because I tell people this, even from the indie side of things, it's like, when you, when somebody says that they want to do a book, they want to publish a book, right? you know, whenever I um, am teaching a class or talking to people about publishing, people are always like, you know, oh, okay, so I need to do this and I need to have that. And it's like, <laughs> everybody wants to have like the most expensive computer. Yeah. They want to have, they want to have all of the formatting software yep. <laughs> and they want to do all the things, right? Mm -hmm. Makes and you I'm feel like, more real, official. It does. It makes them feel official. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but you, can you afford to buy all those things? Because that software is going to cost you a few hundred dollars that computer that you're buying, that if your book doesn't like hit the bestsellers list on day right. one, you may never crack that sucker open right. again. <laughs> right. You know I mean? <laughs> right. You'll be like disheartened and you'll be pissed off and whatever, whatever, you know? And so I tell people, you know, writing is writing. Is writing, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, all you need is like a word processor. You just need something to, you know, you can take a pen and paper and put that That's sucker right. on whatever. But, um, and most of the platforms now allow you to upload like a basic Word document and they will turn it into an EPUB or whatever file for you. And, you know, you can, a lot of the, a lot of the platforms, they understand the plight of an indie author. And so the platforms give you the tools that you need. You can create your cover, you can create yeah, your interior so cool. files. You can do everything through those interfaces so you don't have to necessarily own it all yourself. You can use right. the free tools. And so I love that you said those things because it's so similar to what we do in the indie world. You know, don't you don't have to jump all the way out there. You can start yeah. at the beginning, take your time, slow walk it. <laughs> That's right. Slow That's walk right. it till you get to where you need to be, and it'll still be there. You'll be fine. Yes, it'll be indeed. Fine. It'll be there. Um, before we get ready to close, what I want to do is make sure we get all your social so people okay. know how to contact you. Um, and then I want to talk about what's next for you. So okay. can you tell us how do we contact you on social media? So for indie authors who may want to work with you, for aspiring voiceover artists, 
who may want to just learn from you, how do they contact you? How do we contact you on social media? The, uh, thank you for asking. That's very kind of you and thoughtful of you. Um, the best way, I will say, I'm more responsive on Facebook than anywhere else. So Rebecca Lee, Rebecca underscore Lee underscore speaks, um, or just Rebecca Lee speaks. I think that if you put that in, it'll, it'll come right up, I believe. Um, I'm on IG, same name. Twitter is Rebecca Lee underscore VO. Um, but, but honestly, a good old Facebook messenger or my email. Rebecca Lee speaks at gmail.com. By all means, send it to me there. I have a website, um, Rebecca Lee speaks.com that has my demos on it. So check them out. I just got a new one done that I'm super excited about. Please give it a listen. Um, and any of those means, please reach out. But I think that I spend most of my time, probably email and Facebook messenger would be the way if you're interested in talking to me and I'm more than happy to chat anytime. Oh, I'm sure. Like I said, Twyla Turner is any, whatever. I mean, the price is like 50 people already. Um, <laughs> let's talk about, um, before we close out, let's talk about what's next for you. Do you have, I know you told us a little bit about the, the other project that's similar to um, the Green Book, right? But mm -hmm. is there anything else you can share with us that we should keep our eye out for? Anything that we should be ready to like one click or whatnot? Is there a commercial we should all be like, we know her? Like, <laughs> What, tell us what we should be looking for. Okay, well, my two that I'm so proud of doing right now that I'm having a blast with. Somehow I suddenly became the voice of Johnsonville Sausage, y'all. Don't know how. That's not an official title, by the way, but I, am, I have done so many commercials for them, um, but there's going to be a lot of Johnsonville products that suddenly I'm going to be the voice for, and I might be the only... When I listened to the, the, I went back and listened to some of them and I, I couldn't hear, I don't remember hearing any black women except for the companies that worked, the people that worked for the company, there were women advertising for them. But I think that I was the only black woman just voiceover that's not on cam. So that made me feel even more excited and I could be wrong, but I, I think so. I did some research. So there's, there's Johnsonville and I'm doing promos for Discovery Channel, Discovery Plus. So that new streaming site um, has just dropped and I'm doing promo for them. And I've been enjoying that a lot because that was kind of one of the bucket list things that I was wishing to work for them and do some narration for them. So I'm happy to have my foot in the door. Those two things, hopefully, hopefully you guys hear on the radio TV soon. Well, that sounds fun because let me tell you, I'm originally from the southern part of the states. So I am no stranger to a Johnsonville. <laughs> I know all things Johnsonville, trust me. Okay. Um, so <laughs> now you're going to have me. I'm going to be listening to every commercial like, is that? Is that you know, is that Rebecca Lee? I'm going to be like, is this one you? I'm gonna send you a message like, is that you? But um, that's so fantastic. That is so awesome. Listen, if you hear me, y'all give me a holler. Yes, definitely. We don't have to tag you in it. You. That would be so cool. Thank when so I do much. see one, if I think it's you, I'm going to be like, tag on Twitter. Like, is this you, Rebecca Lee? Like, I'm just going to be, it's going to be a game for me. Like, where's Waldo or something? <laughs> it's gonna be, I'm going to turn it into a personal game. Do. I want it you to still that. feels good. I want you to know that. This has been so much fun. It feels so good. Thank, I, I, I know it, it must. So much. I know it must because yeah. as, a, as a writer, um, every time a new book comes out, I wrote it. I produced it. <laughs> but when I see it, I'm like... It. you know I'm like looking at it yeah. on, you know yeah. it's like like what is yep. that I don't know what that is but I'll see it on Amazon or Kobo or BNN wherever it's at and I'm like I literally just stare at it and it feels it just it's weird I love it so <laughs> much <laughs> no it's not that's that's real that's real that's so real yeah it's so, real. so it's always it. gonna make you smile like every time you see it it doesn't get old it does it not does get not. old so if y'all hear me tag me please do i'll, I'll be cheesing from ear to ear <laughs> <laughs> well you got it i will be there be like, i'll be cheesing from ear to me ear. one more time and be like yes i'm here again i'm gonna do it <laughs> <laughs> i'm like that ain't even me that ain't even me <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this has been so much fun, Rebecca Lee. Thank you for joining me. You know, it's been a and pleasure. for everybody, 
all of you out there in YouTube world and podcast land. I am Angela K. Austin, and this is Rebecca Lee. I hope that you guys enjoyed this conversation. And if you did, like, comment, share, subscribe, make a girl happy, you know, and also make sure that you follow Rebecca Lee. Keep in touch with both of us. Let us know if you hear on that Johnsonville commercial. And you know your girl has some new books coming out. So make sure you let me know if you're opening <laughs> up my books and all of that jazz. So thank you guys for joining me for this episode. And I look forward to seeing you guys. Thank all you. Of you.